Okay, let's start. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Maybe good morning, everyone. So, welcome to the tutor two uh, about the taming delays in several physical systems. Uh, this uh, tutorial uh, will be presented by myself and uh, uh, Dr. Min Shui Chen. Uh, Min Shui is from the Aachen University. Uh, currently, uh, he is a postdoc of Professor Yus Peter Cartoon. Uh, before uh, joining um, uh, Yus Peter Cartoon's group, uh, Min Shui did his PhD with, uh, with me uh, at the Institute of uh, Software uh, Chinese Academy of Sciences. Uh, Min Shui is mainly focused on formal methods, uh, quantitative verification, not and the programming theory, several physical systems. Now I'm a professor at a, a Sticky Laboratory of Computer Science uh, Institute of Software, Chinese Academy of Sciences. Focus on formal methods, several physical system, uh, program verification model, and uh, temporal logics. Uh, I think if you have any question, uh, you, uh, uh, you you can interrupt uh, uh, us uh, during the the talk. This tutorial is about the how to deal with delay in systems, uh, including uh, uh, many of our recent works. So now. Uh, let's start the, the tutorial. So, firstly, let's explain the of several physical systems. According to Behati and the Jill's uh, definition, uh, several physical systems uh, refers to a new generation of uh, systems with the integrated computational and uh, uh, physical capabilities that with humans through many new modernities, the ability to interact with and expand the capabilities of the physical world through computation, communication, and control uh, is a key enabler for future technology development. Uh, actually, you see that uh, several physical systems are possible in our daily life, like the motor mobile, spacecrafts, high-speed train, a uh, nuclear reactor, robot surgeon, uh, robot control, and so on. Uh, particularly, you see many of these systems are safety critical. So uh, how to uh, uh, guarantee the, uh, the reliability and the correctness of this system is very important. For example, uh, there are uh, many accidents happened. For uh, uh, 1997 uh, to the uh, 2003, uh, there are more than 200 patients died of defibrillator diff failures. Also, you see that uh, uh, the twin crash uh, accident happened in, in 2011 uh, in China uh, that uh, uh, resulted in uh, uh, around 40 passengers died plus uh, um, more than 170 passengers injured. Also, you see that uh, uh, Japanese Space Center uh, sen uh, uh, launched a, a, a tiny telescope. It's uh, named Astro Edge, but after uh, one month, uh, uh, one month, the telescope disappeared because of some of the software bugs. So you see that uh, how can we provide people with uh, several physical systems so that they can put their lab on, which is a challenge for computer science and uh, control theory. Uh, actually, you see that uh, uh, some pioneer people in, uh, in computer science, like uh, Joseph C. Farkis, uh, Thomas Henson, uh, uh, already pointed out the challenging. Uh, they claimed that we need a mathematical basis for systems modeling and analysis, which integrates both computation and the physical uh, constant in a consistent op operative manner. Uh, actually, two issues we need to consider here. First uh, uh, means that uh, once we have the 
system also we have the 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 property to the system and also the assumption about the environment of the system we need to verify why the the system certify the property under the uh, the environment it's called the verification problem uh, another issue is that uh, when uh, uh, given property and the assumption about the environment, what do we need to do to synthesize a system such that uh, the, uh, the system in parallel with the environment can guarantee the property? It's called the synthesis problem. Definitely, you see that uh, the, uh, the how to uh, specify the property. The property could be safety, liveliness, termination, uh, cost, efficiency, and so on. Definitely, the system itself is very complicated. Uh, it could be intricacy, uh, content delays, randomness, and certainty, uh, which uh, makes the uh, verification uh, uh, and uh, the synthesis problem are very difficult. So the aim here is uh, to develop mathematically rigorous techniques for Designing safety critical cyber physical systems. Yeah, I think there is some background noise. Just go ahead. Okay, okay. Well, push uh, pushing the limits of automation, okay, uh, as far as possible. Uh, in this talk, we, we mainly focus on the, the complex behavior related to delays. Actually, uh, 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 Britain pollution, uh, George uh, said uh, maybe more than one uh, more than two hundred years ago in design parents of failure. Uh, it, it is leading to ordinary people's life to scientists, in particular to uh, computer scientists and the council folks too, also. Uh, Actually, you see that uh, uh, the uh, George Kennan, uh, who uh, was I was a uh, prime uh, prime prime minister of Britain. He briefly controlled the, the Great Britain well. Actually, you see that uh, to deal with the delay, we need to have a model first. Actually, uh, currently uh, hybrid uh, automata. Uh, 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 is a common used uh, model for cyber physical system. Uh, here you see that uh, in hybrid system, the system can be uh, uh, can contain two parts: the plant part and the control part. The uh, the control part uh, collecting uh, data of the plant part uh, uh, via sensors, then maybe a load of continuous computation into interleaved with the discrete decisions then com compute a, a console command the actuator will uh, uh, issue the console command to the plants part like the, this picture so here the crucial question is uh, how do the controller and the plant interact uh, each other a uh, traditional answer is the coupling uh, between the the plant and the controller uh, is a really free means that uh, the model dynamics of the plant is uh, covered by the conjunction of uh, individual uh, ordinary differential equations uh, switching between the modes uh, is a uh, immediate reaction to environment conditions so the so here is, uh, is an example. So here is a, a car uh, emergency braking system, uh, which is uh, given by the similar diagrams, uh, like here. So, uh, so, so in this uh, uh, similar diagrams, so a uh, delay free coupling between uh, work uh, components is assumed. Also, uh, instance the feed through with work functional blocks. Uh, uh, is assumed. So central question is, is about this uh, uh, similar diagram is that uh, such model is uh, realistic. If not, uh, does it have observable effects on control performance means that uh, the 
may uh, may be a uh, give uh, observer effects on council performance also may those effects be uh, detrimental even harmful right so let's discuss this uh, question in details uh, actually uh, why the uh, is the uh, instant company the analyst uh, uh, actually you see that in our reality so you say delay is uh, is a uh, uh, positive all uh, everywhere so so we are no better as soon as computer scientists under the scene serious delays are ahead uh, in uh, in see that uh, currently currently most of uh, modern control are digital control so for digital control, control as uh, uh, we showed in the picture, you see that uh, we have to consider the conversion between the uh, analog signal and the digital signal. Certainly, such conversion uh, induces latency in signal uh, forwarding. Uh, also, you see that uh, as I said before, so uh, for the uh, for the interaction between the uh, the plant part and the control part, we need to use the, the sensor to collect in data. Uh, particularly for some of the complex uh, sensors like CV, uh, the, the single processing needs uh, processing time. So that adds a single delays. Also, usually many of the modern control are networked. Certainly, uh, network control introduce communication latencies into the feed, particularly that the uh, Internet of Things are popular. So, for Internet of Things, uh, harvesting, fusing, and forwarding data networks enlarge the communication latency by orders of magnitude very much. So, you see that. Uh, Instant coupling is a lot of realistic, uh, uh, you see, actually, right? Certainly, we, we will ask uh, what kind of uh, delays should we consider here? Actually, you see that uh, uh, there are two types of delays, uh, what, uh, what we faced. Firstly, you see that uh, maybe uh, uh, the, uh, the delay we need to consider is the uh, 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 Time uh, tolerance to the uh, the the uh, the input from the in environment. Such delays actually is easy to model with the hybrid automata. You see, there are lots of techniques to deal with such kind of delays. Now, uh, now we consider it's called a network delays. It means that information of a different age coexists. And is queuing in the network when peppered towards the target. For example, end to end latency may ex uh, exceed sampling intervals uh, and so on by orders of magnitude. Also, uh, this delay is a lot expressible in standard models like uh, time automata and hybrid automata and so on. So, that is our, uh, uh, our focus today. So, the second question. So delays have observable effects. Uh, here we consider the, uh, a simple example. For, uh, for this sim uh, uh, simple example, let's we just consider a, a, a dynamic system x dot equal to minus x, uh, xt uh, with the initial state uh, uh, 1. You see, for this uh, dynamic system, its behavior like uh, the uh, like the the picture at the uh, uh, left side, you see that uh, from this picture you see the wall state of this uh, system above the x uh, 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 x uh, uh, coordinate. Uh, uh, you see it means that a wall state above the, uh, the 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 line x equal to zero. So once you see once we uh, ask the system satisfy the uh, safety means that x greater than or equal to zero. Uh, definitely, uh, such a system satisfies the safety. So, in practice, uh, in reality, suppose that the system has one time uh, unit uh, delay. 
and like the 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 the, the, the uh, delay differential equation given here, you see its behavior can be depicted as the right picture. You see its behavior will fluctuate uh, uh, around the uh, the uh, the line x equal to zero. So you see that uh, for this behavior, definitely the safety is uh, violated. Uh, fortunately, you see the behavior goes to the stable. Uh, finally, the safety will be destroyed any, uh, anymore. Okay. Uh, we see another example. It's called uh, the delay logistic equation, uh, which was uh, uh, first proposed by Fulton. Uh, uh, is used to model the dynamic change of uh, of this population. Uh, certainly, you see that uh, uh, mathematically, you see that uh, the the uh, de delay logistic equation is given by here. The x dot equal to uh, uh, not, uh, sorry, sorry n n dot equal to n uh, times n minus n t. Uh, oh, sorry. N uh, T minus R, uh, you see R is stand for the time delay. So N T star uh, the popula current population. N dot is the uh, the dynamic uh, the change rate of the the this uh, population. Uh, you you see that uh, the the rate the it depends on the current population as the population in the past some time for example population change depends on the building also on the the some the the the, the populations in the past so that they can motivate enough to produce the generation and so on so so now we see that uh, the, the effect of the delay on the, uh, the behavior of the delay differential equations. So once assume that uh, the delay is equal to the 1.25, uh, so the behavior is depicted as the left side uh, picture. In the picture, you see that the behavior goes to the stable or very soon, OK? Uh, once enlarge the delay to the 1.52, you see that uh, the behavior will fluctuate uh, very much at the beginning, but finally go to the stable anymore. But uh, once we enlarge the delay a little bit to 1.65, you see that uh, the, uh, the behavior will enlarge. Uh, so, uh, stable anymore okay so you see definitely delay can observe effects to the behavior of the system definitely so let's see uh, uh, discuss the, the the last question may the effect be harmful uh, let's consider a, a more concrete example let's consider a robot uh, uh, which uh, which is runs in a four times four square rooms like the picture here um, each time the robot can move uh, in the zoom to a combination or left or right or up or down okay uh, in the room there are two types of obstacles uh, one is the fixed obstacle like the uh, the uh, the two uh, uh, Two, two, like here, and one is uh, three, uh, zero, like here. Uh, the other type of obstacle is a movable obstacle, like the, the like the kid. Uh, the the movable uh, obstacle can move one step uh, each time, uh, left or right, up or down. So, the the goal of the system is that uh, we find a planning for the robot so that uh, the robot can escape in the zoom to the any obstacles you see definitely you see that uh, uh, the the robot make a decision depending on the uh, the information collected from the environment for example through the uh, 
uh, infrared camera uh, normally. Okay, so once once we uh, like uh, here, so once we assume that uh, the infrared camera works well, can always collect the information uh, of the environment uh, in time. So you see that uh, definitely for the robot, we can work out a uh, winning strategy. They, uh, for example, they just uh, work, uh, uh, run around the, these ob uh, obstacles, the, the fixed obstacle. We can always avoid uh, any uh, obstacle, OK? But uh, unfortunately, the reality you see that uh, it's quite common that uh, the infrared camera uh, cannot uh, collect data. For example, maybe with one uh, one step uh, delay. For this case, uh, we still can uh, work out a winning strategy for the robot. They just do one step uh, pre uh, decision. Okay. Uh, once the robot, uh, the the infrared camera uh, has a two step delay to work out a, a winning strategy for the robot. But uh, in this case, that uh, we need some extra memory uh, to uh, to record the history of the 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 the, uh, the behavior of the robots, so that uh, uh, depends on the hist uh, the execution history of the robot. The robot can make a, a can work out a winning strategy. Uh, once again, uh, suppose that. Uh, there are two steps of delay for the uh, for the uh, for the, uh, the, the the sensor. So for this case, you see that uh, robot uh, is unwinnable anymore. So so you see definitely you see that the delay uh, uh, does ha 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 has the, the effects uh, even to be harmful, right? So the uh, conclusion. Delays in feedback control loops are ubiquitous. Uh, actually, uh, they may well invalidate the safety stability certificates obtained uh, by verify, uh, verifying delayed uh, free obstruction of the feedback uh, control systems. So you see definitely automatic verification synthesis methods uh, to address feedback delays in hybrid system uh, should therefore a uh, uh, bond, but uh, surprisingly they don't have. Uh, actually, also this issue has uh, has uh, has been extensively studied in control theory, but uh, there is little work in computer science. Uh, here we just need some of the uh, work uh, which 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 is done in recent years. Okay. So in this uh, uh, tutorial, we mainly focus on the two issues related to the uh, uh, time delay dynamic and hybrid systems. The first, uh, we record the verification issue, uh, means that a given property and the system, uh, as well as to the environment, uh, we need the, the system together with the environment uh, satisfy this, uh, the property. Uh, the other issue is called a synthesis problem, means that uh, given to the system an assumption to the environment, uh, uh, to the in, uh, uh, to the environment, such a system uh, as such that the system uh, together with the environment satisfy the, the the property. Okay, so in details uh, for the first issue, we consider the two. Uh, uh, two uh, types of problems. First one, we consider the bounded safety, means that uh, we need to check whether the safety is satisfied or not uh, within the bounded time horizon. Uh, here, we consider the two approaches. Uh, one is uh, uh, approach is uh, uh, called the simulation based verification, simulation uh, based, uh, simulation plus the sensitive error analysis based approach. Uh, the second approach is uh, 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 homomorphism uh, uh, based approach. Uh, the other question is unbounded safety verification. Here we consider two uh, uh, two verification problems. 
first uh, we consider the simple uh, delay differential equations uh, by using interval tender model uh, plus some the slight uh, linear analysis. Uh, the second issue we consider the general uh, 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 the verification of general delay differential equations by using linearization uh, plus a, a spectral analysis technique. Uh, also, the, for the synthesis issue, uh, we also consider two uh, sub problems. First, the problem we consider the uh, controller synthesis uh, for the uh, time delay system in the discrete settings. The second uh, uh, sub problem we consider the synthesis issue for the general. A uh, hybrid system with a delay. We call it the delay hybrid automata. Okay. So uh, you see that uh, now I think maybe it's a mean size 10 uh, technical de details of the, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, first verification issue also for the synthesis uh, uh, in the discrete setting. Then I will take up the synthesis in the, uh, in, in the general setting. Okay. Oh. So inside now it's your turn. Yeah, thanks, Najun. Um, maybe let me quickly share my screen. Okay, just a, a second. I stop. In case there are any questions, uh, feel free to unmute yourself or ask in the chat. Um, so, Najin, can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah, perfect. So, uh, we are currently on slide 13, right? You can, as you can see. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how I can uh, hide this control panel. Yeah. All right. So um, <clears throat> maybe a quick notice uh, from the organizer that this meeting is recorded. Um, so if you don't want yourself to appear anywhere in the recording, you can simply uh, keep your camera off, and you, but you can still ask questions in the chat. Well, um, and hello everyone, I'm Ming Shui Chen. Um, I will take over the screen and walk you through the rest part of the tutorial, actually the second part. But for that, I hope uh, Najin has already convinced you that um, time delays are often a killer factor in the design and verification synthesis of cyber-physical systems. So the rest of the tutorial will be mainly focusing on two uh, sections. The first on the safety verification problem of systems modeled by delay differential equations. Um, and this is uh, basically continuous time um, dynamical systems. And for the second part, I will go through the synthesis of safety uh, safe controllers, which are tolerant to uh, delayed interactions. And there we will talk about discrete time systems and also um, the synthesis of switching logic in hybrid uh, automaton. <clears throat> All right, for the first part, we basically address the problem of delayed feedback control in, in continuous dynamical systems. And here I'd like to uh, credit our co-authors Martin Fanzler and um, Peter Nasia Mozart from University of Oldenburg in Germany, as well as Yang Jia Li and Shen Hua Feng Bai Xue Liang Zhou from ISCAS China. Uh, let me start by briefly recap some history on um, 
delayed differential dynamical systems. The study of delayed coupling in differential dynamics actually dates back to the 1920s, where um, Vito Voltra, in his study of the predator prey dynamics, formulated a rather general mathematical model which incorporates time delays. So the intuition here is that um, the population size of a certain species in nature definitely needs some time to grow to the age until um, reproduction. So there are some time lag in the model. And such a model was later popularized by um, many researchers, for example, Bellman and Cook. And here's a quote from their book in 1963, saying that detailed studies of the real world impel us to take in, uh, into account the fact that the rate of change of physical systems depends not only on their present state, but also on their past history. More concretely, this gives rise to the model now known as delayed differential equations in such a form. And here I highlight uh, the difference with the well-known ordinary differential equation. Um, more intuitively, so here x is a vector of the state um, at time t. Dot here means the first order derivative, uh, time derivative of the state. F here is a vector of functions. You can see that um, this function depends not only on the current state x of t, but also on some past history state. For example, um, here r1 is a, <clears throat> is a positive constant, uh, which models the state r1 time units ago. Uh, and actually this model allows multiple constant delays here. And this f is also uh, often referred to as the, flow <clears throat> as the flow field of the model, which models the change of x with respect to time. And so in the second line, we have the initial condition, basically tells us how the system looks like uh, at the start of the evolution. In contrast to ordinary differential equations where one single initial state suffices to determine all the um, subsequent states, in delayed differential equations, we somehow need a function uh, as the initial condition. So here the function phi of t, Basically, it models the states uh, from time minus r max up to t, uh, zero. And here, r max is the maximum delay through r1 to rk. Okay. And by further incorporate, uh, further assuming some Lipschitz continuity uh, condition, we can define the unique solution or the unique trajectory of the system. So uh, denoted by g of phi here. So this is a function which maps from time to a um, real vector. And uh, this is the solution of the system at time t, starting from a in initial function phi. All right, um, here I like to use this slide to argue that reasoning about DDEs are significantly harder than ordinary differential equations. Why this is the case? Uh, as you can see on the left-hand side where we have this very simple delayed differential equation, as you have already seen uh, in previous slides, here we have a constant delay one here. And you can in fact um, slice the solution space of such a system. And here the length of every segment is one, so the, the delay one here. And in contrast to ordinary differential equations where the evolution of the system is nothing but a propagation of single states uh, to another state a long time. But here in delayed differential equations, um, it's no longer state snapshots, but some functional state snapshots because for example, if we want, we want to determine the solution here in this segment, we need all the solutions from the previous um, segment. And 
apparently there are infinitely many states in this small uh, segment. And that makes that um, delay differential equations actually provide a infinite dimensional um, system rather than the finite one as ordinary differential equations. And the conclusion is that try DDE only if infinite state no longer is scary enough to you. Uh, before we dive into the technical parts, I'd like to formulate what is the uh, safety verification problem. Um, as is the case for ordinary differential equations, we usually have an initial set <clears throat> which models uh, the state space where the system evolution can start. And here in our case, this would be a, state, a set of functions because we need a function as the initial condition, right? And then starting from a certain initial condition, the system may evolve according to the flow field of the differential equations. And the safety verification obligation is to guarantee that any of such um, solution or trajectory never enters um, a given unsafe set, so the red region here. In fact, the, the union of all the solutions of this system is called the reachable set of this system. And we need to guarantee that this reachable set is somehow disjoint with the unsafe set. However, for even for the simpler case of ordinary differential equations, computing such a reachable set exactly is uh, often intractable, especially for some nonlinear cases. And this is the same case for delayed differential equations. So in the community, we often try to approximate such a reachable set. For example, we can try to compute an over approximation of this set. And if this over approximation is away from this uh, unsafe set, then we can safely claim that uh, the system is safe. And however, if the over approximation overlaps with the unsafe set, then we somehow have to refine the approximation until they are disjoint from each other. And here we distinguish two types of safety here. Um, we say that the system is T-safe if no solution enters the unsafe set within the time interval from the uh, minus maximum delay up to time instant T. When T goes to infinity, we specifically say that uh, the system is infinite safe. So it is safe in the entire time horizon from, um, from minus r max to infinity. Now uh, I will go through the technical parts. So in the first part, we talk about boundary safety, um, safety up to some time, some given time bound t. And then we will see how this can be extended to unbounded safety by using some stability um, uh, results. And in fact, uh, for for technique of bounded safety, we can always <clears throat> reduce it to the case of um, bounded safety. All right, the, the first method we propose for verifying bounded safety is based on simulations. And here's um, um, are some plots uh, from some paper, which basically is are the um, basis of simulation based verification. This is not the case for delayed differential equations, but um, it has been established for the verification of ordinary differential equations. On the left hand side, um, this gray area is a set of initial states or a initial functional states. And we do uh, a partition here, as you can see, using some small circles, which uh, such that the union of all those circles cover the initial set. And then from each of the, the small circles, we do a simulation, so a numerical simulation starting from the center points of this circle. So this uh, dashed curve is the simulation of the solution. In the meantime, we bloat such a simulation by some sensitivity analysis techniques. And this gives us an over approximation, so this um, big gray circle, which 
necessarily covers the exact reachable sets of the system at time t. And you can imagine that if you do so for each of those art, uh, circles, the union of all those big circles will necessarily cover the reachable set at time t. And you can use such an over approximation to do the verification. So um, in our approach, we basically generalize this to, uh, to further application uh, in delayed differential equations. And the, the idea is quite um, obvious. In the first step, we do numerical simulation, right? Um, after a partition of the initial set. And this blue curve is a uh, simulated solution of the system. After that, because you know numerical simulation has uh, numerical errors, so that's why we also um, add some error bounds here. This is depicted by the green tube. Um, so this guarantees that any um, real solution starting from this point will be contained in this green tube. We do this by solving an optimization problem. After that, we bloat the, the um, green tube into the red one by sensitivity analysis. So this basically guarantees that, that every solution starting from this um, partition will be contained or enclosed in this red tube. And then by taking the union of all the red tubes from each of the partitions, we get an over approximation of the ritual set. If this is not uh, accurate enough, then we can further refine the partition and do the same procedure again. I wouldn't go into details of this um, approach, but if you're interested, you can refer to our uh, paper at FM in 2016. Um, here I, I give some examples to illustrate the simulation-based idea. Again, we use the um, delayed logistic equation where N is the population size um, and R is the constant delay. So in a very specific setting, you can see that um, in uh, the, the, the bloated uh, over approximation of a simulated uh, trace. All right, this uh, dashed tube is the over approximation. And here the, on the right hand side is actually an instance where we can prove unsafety. Um, suppose we have a, let's say a, a threshold of N 1.6, and we say that everything above this threshold is unsafe. And then you see at some point here, the entire over approximation of the ritual set at this point already falls uh, entirely above this threshold. So now we can claim that um, the system is unsafe because the over approximation already uh, falls entirely in the unsafe region. And then uh, this is an illustration of proving safety. Suppose we are interested in an initial set starting from 0 0.5 to 1.5, and then we can first do the parti partition, right? Um, this gives us to gives us two uh, sub initial sets, which are 1 to 1.5 and 0 0.5 to 1. And for each of those partitions, uh, we do the simulation based verification. But unfortunately, uh, for, for the upper initial set, we see that the over approximation somehow overlaps with the uh, unsafe region. And now we cannot claim anything because uh, this is only an over approximation. Uh, then we can further refine this um, set from 1 to 1.5 uh, into another two um, intervals. So one from um, 1.2 to 1.5 and the other from one to 1.25, I think. And then, but on such a partitioning, actually we can prove that uh, the over approximation is disjoint from the unsafe region. And so we can claim that uh, the first partition at the beginning is safe. And a similar procedure follows for the lower uh, initial partition 
And hence, after six rounds of simulations, we can actually claim safety of the entire system. Here's another example from biology, which models the growth of some bacterial, um, uh, some bacterials. And here we have a two-dimensional system. One is variable S and the other is X. Here I give the plot, um, the phase plot of these two dimensions. So this is S and this is X. This red region, the dashed region is the uh, initial set that we are interested in. And you can see that uh, there are quite some partitions, uh, which partitions the uh, initial set. And after, uh, let's say in total 17 rounds of simulation and partitions, we can actually prove that the system is safe. So no trajectory would ever cross this um, unsafe barrier. And in fact, you can also see that all this solutions actually converge to the uh, blue point, which is known as the equilibrium or steady point. Um, one issue of this method is that even though we can claim safety after several, several rounds of simulations, but you can still see that we, are, we have to somehow tackle the points that stay inside the initial set, so the interior points. However, for a particular class of uh, delayed differential equations, we don't need to do so because we only need to take care of points on the boundary of the initial set. And this gives rise to the second approach, which is based on boundary propagation. So this is also an extension from a method dealing with uh, other differential equations. The general idea here is that um, we came up with the bond on the magnitude of delay R here. I wouldn't go into details of this bond, but the general idea is that if the delay in our model, so R here, uh, is no larger than such a bound, then our system has a very nice property called homomorphism. And this homomorphism property says that intuitively, starting from any point on the boundary of the initial set, then after arbitrary time, such a bound will be mapped uh, to some point on the boundary of the exact reachable set. So it's not going to happen that some point inside um, the initial set <coughs> will be mapped onto the boundary, or vice versa, something uh, on the boundary will be mapped into the interior parts of the reachable set. So there's a nice one-to-one -one correspondence, and this is what homomorphism tells us. And because of this nice property, we can actually only handle points on the boundary. And then uh, if we can compute an enclosure of the reachable sets boundary, then we can actually compute easily compute over approximations of the reachable set by simply uh, uh, imposing some convex shape here that encloses all the uh, boundary points here. In the meantime, we can also easily compute an inner approximation of the reachable set. So this is the yellow area here. Notice that uh, inner approximation is also a, a very significant issue in the uh, verification of hybrid systems because we can uh, often use inner approximations to falsify some safety property. All right, we talked about bounded safety. Uh, now what hey, about- Hey, um, Minza, hey yeah? Minza, I, I would suggest maybe we have some, uh, have a break here. Yeah, it would be great. So, um, yeah, so maybe we can start uh, at, uh, for example, the 10 past the three, it's okay? Um, maybe not all the audiences have the same uh, time region. So- Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> Uh, maybe we have a uh, 15 minutes uh, break here, okay? Yeah, yeah, it would be fun. See you soon. Yeah, see you. Uh, by the way, if you have any questions, feel free to leave in the chat. Hey, Minsai, should we start now? Yeah, I think we can slowly start.
Let me make my slides full screen. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, can you see the slides now? Yes. Yeah. All right, so um, I'd like to continue uh, about this part. And we have discussed about uh, bounded safety verification using either simulation-based uh, approach or the boundary propagation-based approach. And in the coming uh, section, I will show how this can be generalized to unbounded safety, leveraging some stability <coughs> properties of the system. <coughs> All right, I first start with the a method that can address the very simple form of delayed differential equation in this form. Namely, uh, we only allow history uh, state in the uh, dynamics. So here we cannot have x of t in f. And we will show that how this form of delayed differential equations can be reduced to a discrete time system uh, which have the same stability and safety uh, properties. Let's start by the very naive approach. As you have already seen in my uh, previous slides, where you, you can actually slice your solution space into different segments. And in fact, the solution at the segment N can be computed by taking the integral of the uh, flow field in the previous uh, segment. And in such a way, you can generate a Taylor series for, for the segment. However, there are big problems of such a naive approach. This is also known as the uh, method of steps in delayed differential equations. Uh, the first problem is that uh, the degree of the Taylor series can grow uh, very rapidly because in order to compute the exact solution, you need sometimes to compute uh, the infinitely many derivatives of the, of the system. And hence, the computation is uh, nearly intractable. In the meantime, it lacks a um, way for analyzing unbounded behaviors. And uh, to mitigate the problem, we can introduce another uh, idea such that uh, we can over approximate the segment solutions by the notion of interval Taylor series. So basically, interval Taylor series is uh, a Taylor series where all the coefficients are intervals. So we can use such intervals to enclose uh, this, the solution space or the reachable set. And if we somehow assume some fixed degree for the interval Taylor series, then the problem becomes tractable if the degree is low enough, of course. And this permits us to um, use some established technique to do the verification, for example, bound, bounded model checking for hybrid systems. But still, there's no immediate means for, for analyzing unbounded behaviors of the system because we can only compute finite, uh, uh, let's say, derivatives. And uh, in our approach, we will show how we can mitigate the problem further to extract a discrete time linear operator that uh, helps us in the computation of the uh, interval Taylor series uh, from the previous one. And uh, we can use this operator to analyze its properties such, that, uh, such like stability or safety. And now uh, the verification, the unbounded verification problem actually becomes feasible. I will illustrate the idea using a very simple delayed differential equation. Again, this simple form, this model is a negative feedback control system uh, where we have a constant delay one. And for simplicity, we assume a, a simple initial condition where, um, which is a constant function one. As I said, we can try to compute uh, the segment wise solution using integration. That means we can compute the solution at time n plus t using the solution at time n. But uh, in the meantime, we take the integral of the previous uh, segment. And now let's do some uh, renaming stuff uh, for the sake of presentation and um, by just doing some shifting stuff between the segmentations and by renaming x 
to F. And then we get this, uh, this formulation, which is identical to the previous one. So here you can see that um, the solution at the segment N depends on the solution at segment N minus one. Uh, of course, we also need the integral here. And now if you really try to compute such a, a segment wise solution, then the degree will increase very rapidly. For example, if you do the computation after a day, then the degree would be like 86,000 or so, which is obviously intractable already beyond the first few steps. Now let's see how interval Taylor series can help us here. Um, we can first fix a degree two. This is the degree of the polynomial template in this form. So we, we assume that f of f n of t is a polynomial uh, of t where we have some parameters a n zero, a n one, and a n two, and all those uh, parameters are intervals. So such a uh, polynomial ten template actually encodes uh, a tube or an enclosure of infinitely many uh, polynomials. And we use such intervals to incorporate the approximation errors because you see we here, here we do a truncation. We don't have um, infinitely many, sorry. Yeah, here we do a truncation for the Taylor series. So we only have monomials up to, order, uh, up to the other two. And that's why there are approximation errors and we use intervals to uh, address such errors. And then we can compute the uh, derivative up to the other two. Um, so the first order derivative is nothing but uh, the flow field or the dynamics. And this gives us um, this polynomial with parameters, right? And then by further taking uh, the derivative of this polynomial, we get the second order derivative. And now by using the Taylor expansion, we actually have that Fn plus one of T is of this form where this is the first order derivative and this is the second order. Of course, there are approximation errors and we use this um, fresh variable eta n to encode um, the error. And this is an error that is necessarily within the interval zero to one. Uh, by doing some simple calculations, this is an, uh, the resulting uh, polynomial. Notice that Fn plus one is also a Taylor, a, an interval Taylor series. So it has to follow a, a same template in this form. Now by doing a, a coefficient matching. So basically we match this template polynomial with the one that we computed here. So their coefficients have to be identical. And then we get a system in this form. So it says that the coefficients, which are intervals, are um, dependent on the coefficients at the segment n, all right? And this is a matrix where we have this um, eta n, which encodes the, uh, the approximation error. This is a, a time variant parameter, uh, parametric linear operator in discrete time. And time here is modeled by n, n plus one, and so on. We know that this, um, this error necessarily lies in the interval zero up to one. So we can replace this by this new interval. And now we have a discrete time, um, time invariant linear system, uh, which is nothing but a matrix M here. All right, so the derivative of an interval vector is the matrix M times uh, the, the um, the interval parameters. Why this is interesting because we can use such a, a discrete time invariant system to analyze the stability and safety properties of the original delay differential equations. The general observation here is that the global solution X to the original DDE stabilizes asymptotically if the sequence of segments Fn converges to zero. So zero here is the uh, the only equilibrium, so the only steady state. 
And this happens if and only if the, all the coefficients in the so obtained linear operator uh, converge to zero. So there's a connection between the original system and the reduced uh, time invariant system. And the consequence of this observation is that we can always reduce stability verification of delay differential equations to that of the uh, time invariant system. And again, for this system, there are already quite some research efforts on, um, on providing certificates of stability and safety. For example, the nice result here, um, I won't go into the details again, but the impression is that we can compute a Lyapunov function V here for the, um, for the so obtained reduced system A and such that um, our original DDE also benefits from the stability uh, criterion or certificate given by this theorem. And then the general algorithm works as follows. In order to verify unbounded safety of our delay differential equations, say always safe. Um, this can be done by a few steps. So first, um, we have to reduce the, the system to this uh, linear time invariant system operator, right, A here. And then we generate a Lyapunov function for that system using the theorem I just showed. And then we can try to compute a barrier value. Here, uh, C is the barrier value. Um, this is a value such uh, the largest value C, such that this formula is unsatisfiable. This is not so intuitive, but um, trust me that the, the consequence of this is that if there exists such a C, then we can guarantee that if the Lyapunov function gets no larger than C, then we can guarantee that uh, the system at time t is safe. Okay, so basically we use the Lyapunov function, we come up with a bound on this function, and then we can guarantee safety. Remember that we still have to tackle unbounded safety, right? When t goes to infinity. So for this case, we need um, some bound on the uh, discrete steps such that we only need to consider finitely many steps of the uh, discrete time system. And this can be done um, as listed here. Basically, we compute some constant d of m here based on the Lyapunov function. And this gives us a constant k such that we can be sure uh, to reside inside the safety region after step k. And that means anything happening after step k of the time invariant system, we don't need to take care of that anymore. And we only need to verify that the system is safe up to uh, step k. Then we can use whatever techniques um, suitable for bounded verification, for example, bounded model checking for hybrid system again, or, or bounded model checking for discrete time uh, systems. And this actually completes proving unbounded um, properties for our original uh, delay differential equations. And the same technique can also be generalized to tackle um, a more general DDE with multiple uh, with multiple state vectors. For example, here X is a vector of states and G is a, a vector of polynomials. Again, you see a remove delay to the left-hand side, but this is equivalent to that that's X of T minus R on the right-hand side. And still we don't allow uh, the dependency on the current state, basically. And then you can follow similar steps um, by computing the derivatives, do the coefficient matching. Um, and then in this case, you will arrive at a no longer linear, but a polynomial uh, time invariant system. Here, P is a polynomial. And there are, there are established results to analyze the stability behavior of this system using the open of functions. And then you can um, basically follow the similar steps as for the simple case. All right, now, um, as I've already mentioned, this method uh, has, a, has a big restriction that we cannot have the dependency 
on the current state. Okay. And that's why we try to explore a more general method that can actually have the dependency on the current state. And we do this by using some spectral analysis uh, method from uh, mathematics from mathematics. Let's start by considering some simple linear forms of delay differential equations in this form, where A and B are both matrices. There's a nice connection of this behavior of this system with the so-called characteristic equation. And this equation says that uh, the determinant of this equation or a big matrix is zero. And what is inside this equation? So lambda here is um, a variable to this equation. I is the identity matrix. A and B are matrices from the system, okay? And then here I highlight uh, the part that uh, handles delays. Because we have this past history state, x of t minus r here, and that's why we have an exponential term here in this question. Um, you may ask, what is the connection between these two things? All right. Um, if you somehow can solve this equation with, um, in, in lambda, and then plot all the roots to this equation, or we also call them eigenvalues to this equation. So this is, this is um, a typical uh, plot of such uh, eigenvalues, where um, this is the real part of the root lambda, and this is the imaginary part. The connection is that if you somehow can find an upper bound on the real parts of the eigenvalues, so alpha here, then you have a guarantee on the stability behavior of the original delay differential equations. And this certificate says that formally, if the real parts of all the eigenvalues lambda are negative, then there exists constants k and alpha such that your solution um, can be upper bounded by this exponential term. And that's why this is called exponentially stable. Why it is stable? Because alpha here is negative. All right, look at this picture. Alpha is uh, to the left of zero. Alpha is negative. So this exponential term is exponentially decreasing. And this bound holds for any initial condition phi from the, uh, the set of continuous functions. And because of this, for all quantifier, and we call this globally exponentially stable. This is nice, but um, in mathematics, we only know that there exists such constants. But in order to enable automatic verification, we somehow need a way to actually explicitly compute those constants k and alpha here. And that's basically our contribution. So the general idea to enable automatic unbounded verification is by a reduction to boundary verification. How we can achieve this? So first, we provide techniques to identify an upper bound on the real parts of all the eigenvalues by identifying the rightmost eigenvalue. So here uh, you see the rightmost eigenvalue, and then we provide a way to compute the alpha, and also to construct the constant k, which is needed in the stability criterion. And this is the way how to compute k, but I wouldn't go into details there. With those constants, we actually have an exponentially decreasing um, stability uh, certificate. And this exponentially decreasing stuff necessarily encloses all the possible reachable sets of the system. So you can see that here are two solutions. They are all contained in this gray uh, area. And this exponentially decreasing enclosure is nice because uh, suppose we have some unsafe boundaries here depicted as uh, red dashed lines. So we say anything above the upper uh, line or anything below the lower line are unsafe. And then you can simply compute the intersection of these two lines with the um, exponentially decreasing enclosure. And then you get a time step, T star. 
here. And this timestamp basically tells you anything happening afterwards this um, T star will be no longer of interest because they are necessarily contained in the safe area, right? Anything in between these red two red lines are safe. And by using such a T star, you can actually reduce the problem to bounded verification. That means we only need to tackle uh, the safety from zero up to T star. And this is the, the final step of the reduction. Basically for any T larger than T star, infinite safety is nothing but equivalent to T safety. All right, now, now I'll show how we can generalize this idea uh, to the verification of general nonlinear uh, delay differential dynamics. So for nonlinear DDEs, here we have a, uh, a uh, vector of polynomials, f. Uh, it doesn't have to be polynomials, but a vector of functions, f. It depends on the current state x, as well as the past state x, t minus r. And you can rewrite this uh, function by computing the Jacobian matrices, for example, a and b, and rewrite the, the equation into this form, where g here is a higher order term. It can be, uh, let's say, a polynomial of order two. And then if we simply drop this higher order term, we get a linear system, right? We only have the ax and plus by part. This gives it us a linear uh, delay differential equations uh, equation, which we already know how to uh, do the unbounded verification. And we call this the linearization. Um, again, there's a nice stability result for this um, for this nonlinear DDE, but now in a local version. Uh, basically, it says if the real parts of all the eigenvalues of the linearization are negative, then uh, your solution can still be bounded by some exponentially decreasing um, a decreasing function. However, this only holds for a small region uh, of initial functions bounded by some constant delta here. So only if your uh, system starts from a region bounded by delta, the uh, system is exponentially uh, decreasing or, or exponentially stable. Okay. And now we can uh, obtain a similar result for the verification of nonlinear DDEs. Um, first, we identify the rightmost eigenvalues of the linearized uh, DDE. And in the meantime, we construct constants k, and this time also the constant delta here. Remember that delta is, um, is a bound on the initial set of functions such that uh, we can guarantee that the system uh, exponentially decrease to the steady point within this region. And next, uh, we can compute T star, right? Uh, similarly, but this time we still need to compute uh, another constant T prime. And this T prime is nothing but a guarantee that after T prime amount of time, our solution will necessarily enter the delta region. So omega here is an over approximation of over reachable set and upper bounded by delta basically tells us after T prime uh, amount of time, our system solutions uh, will be guaranteed to enter such a delta region. Okay, and we know that we know from the uh, previous theorem that starting from the delta region, we have this exponentially decreasing behavior. Now by um, adding up T prime and T star, we know that anything happening after this time instant is no longer of interest. Um, just to clarify things, so starting from time zero, after T prime amount of time, we enter this delta region. And starting from this delta region, after T star time of unit, um, we will uh, enter the safe region. So that's why we reduce the problem to a bounded verification. And similarly, for any time uh, larger than this, um, uh, this time instant, 
infinite safety is equivalent to bounded safety. What is also interesting for this specific example is that you can see um, this gray uh, big tail here. This is given by some bounded verifiers for hybrid systems. It tells us um, the reachable set will be bounded by this um, gray area. However, as you can see, this tail grows very rapidly at time around 100. And that's why we cannot use such a very coarse over approximation to do unbounded verification. But this is still nice because it provides us with some uh, tight over approximation at the beginning, such that we can use it um, to compute the time instance T prime and T star. And for more details, you can refer to our paper at COF uh, 2019. Now I will illustrate the idea using some concrete example. So this is an, a dynamical system modeling some disease um, pathology. Here you can see we have some rational functions which are not polynomial anymore. And by instantiating the parameters appropriately, we get a um, infinite verification configuration where, in, where we are interested in such a initial set. And we have an unsafe set of uh, states. So because this is uh, not a, absolutely not a linear system, so we first do the linearization. This gives us a system of this shape. Um, and now we compute some critical values, namely alpha, k, and delta. And in this case, we have uh, a special um, t star, which is zero. Basically means um, if you start from a delta region, so this small constant, then you are already in the safe uh, area. And then by combining bounded verification, for example, using the technique from a cough paper, uh, uh, using Taylor models. Um, and in this case, we set the order of the Taylor model to five. Then we obtain that the over approximation up to time 25.95 are already contained in such a constant uh, region delta. And then um, we verified that the over approximation at time t uh, prime plus t stars, in this case, t star is simply zero. We verified that this is disjoint from the unsafe set. And these two things together yield uh, infinite safety of our original um, non-linear and non-polynomial uh, delayed differential equation. Good, uh, here I listed um, some comparison to existing methods for unbounded verification. First, we allow immediate feedback. That is, we allow X of T in our model, as well as multiple delays in the dynamics. This is not the case to the previous method I introduced, which only allow uh, delayed feedback, let's say. And second, uh, we don't need any form of polynomial templates uh, for, the for the unbounded verification. And in fact, polynomial templates are, uh, uh, are a very commonly used concepts in the verification of hybrid systems. For example, people use polynomial templates to uh, generate interval Taylor models, as you already see, uh, saw as well as uh, templates to generate Lyapunov functions or barrier certificates uh, in the verification of hybrid systems. However, template techniques have a, a, a common <clears throat> drawback. That is, um, you can only set um, a certain form of template, and then you basically missed all the, possible, all the other possibilities that don't adhere to this template. And in the meantime, you need usually a very large search space to search the parameters for this templates. Another thing is that we allow delay dependence stability certificate. Um, this basically means our constants K and alpha in our stability certificate are dependent on the delay R. And that's, that means if you somehow vary the delay a bit, then you, the stability enclosure 
also changes. <clears throat> However, some existing technique assumes um, absolute stability, and that means the system is stable no matter how large your delay is. And this is obviously a, a, a big restriction. But still, uh, there are some drawbacks of our method. Apparently, our technique is confined to differential dynamical systems that feature um, exponential stability. Of course, investigation of more permissive forms of stability, for example, asymptotic stability, um, would be a subject to future work to explore whether they admit a similar reduction-based idea to bounded verification. So um, that would be all the parts we talk about um, delay differential equations, I think. And not only, we also talk about it in the hybrid controller synthesis setting. Um, but do we need to take a break? And let me check the time. So how about we have another 15 minutes of break and reconvene um, at five to four o'clock Shanghai time. And before that, uh, in case you have any questions, feel free to write in the chat. I think I will leave my slides here. All right, see you in 15 minutes. Okay. Um, so in the previous session, we have seen a lot of things about delay differential equations, mainly from the perspective of verification. And in the coming session, we will see something different. Uh, basically the focus is how to synthesize safe controls which are tolerant to uh, delayed interaction. And the main goal here is how to stay safe when the observation or actuation of the controller with this environment are confined by delays. And this is a series of work joined with um, colleagues from ISCOS, Audemars University, as well as Wuhan University and Peking University from China. Um, let me again um, motivate the, the idea of um, synthesis of delayed uh, controllers uh, using such an example. So suppose uh, there's a satellite flowing somewhere around the Earth. This is obviously not the Earth, but uh, let's assume so. Suppose that um, the satellite receives a command telling it to accelerate now. If you were the satellite, do you dare to take such an action? If I were the satellite, I wouldn't dare to do so because um, such a command uh, coming all the way from the Earth definitely takes some time, let's say 10 minutes of latency until it can reach the satellite. Okay, And the command of ac uh, acceleration is made 10 minutes ago. And um, after 10 minutes, when the satellite receives the command, it may already get close to some obstacles. And if he or she really uh, accelerates, then uh, it may run into some obstacle. So in this case, um, the satellite can either move very slowly, but this is often not the case. Or alternatively, you, you could trust autonomy here. So basically no com control commands from the earth. However, if you somehow want to control the satellites from the um, control center on earth, then you have to anticipate, anticipate and uh, issue actions early. And that's the main idea behind um, the synthesis of safe controllers um, subject to delayed interaction. And this goes to um, the first part of this session, uh, which models the interaction um, 
as a safety gain. And then we propose some incremental synthesis algorithm, which can synthesize a, a delay resilient control. Uh, let me start by a very trivial uh, safety gain. Uh, firstly, without delay. So as you can see on the left hand side, this is what we call a game graph. And so here we have two players of the game. Uh, one is called the controller, denoted by C. The other is called the environment, denoted by E. And at every C state, the controller makes an action. So either it can choose uh, it can choose A, and then this leads the game to the states where the environment has to make an action, and to um, to encode the um, the choice of the environment. We basically don't distinguish the choice of the environment. We we always uh, assign U here, which basically denotes uncertainty. So the controller itself has no information about um, which action the, the environment chose. And here's a special state E3, which is what we call a, an unsafe state. So basically the goal of the controller player is to avoid uh, visiting such a, an unsafe state by appropriate uh, choice of actions. So in the delay free setting, everything is perfect then we can easily come up with a winning strategy for the control player that is always to play action A, except in the state C3. Why this is the case? Suppose we are currently at state C1, and now we can perform an action A, right? Then we go to state E1. Here, the environment doesn't actually have a choice, so it can only choose action U here, and this leads us to the state C2. And the strategy tells us at C2, we still choose action A, right? And then we, we choose such an action. At E4, um, no matter which action the environment chooses, this all always go to a, um, a controller state uh, where, again, the controller can have the choice to make a safe choice. For example, at C3, the strategy tells us, yeah, we simply choose B. Otherwise, if we take A, then we will go into the unsafe state. So the um, general picture is that the two players make choices in an alternative fashion. And the, and the goal is to come up with a winning strategy for the controller, okay? And there are some nice properties about safety games without any time delays. For example, the game is determined, simply meaning that um, either player controller or the, the player environment has a strategy and they cannot win at the same time or lose at the same time. In the meantime, uh, the strategy for the controller is always memoryless. Uh, the same applies to the environment uh, player. Um, this memory list basically means at every state when we have to make a decision, we only require information as the current state. So we don't depend on any past uh, choices of actions or any past uh, states. Later, you will see that those nice properties will not be the case for games. Uh, under delayed interactions. All right, then what is a game under uh, delayed interaction? This is a high level picture illustrating the idea. So we have two players, the ego player, which models the controller or the adversary player, which models the environment. They both play accord um, according to a game graph or game arena as the one you, you have just seen. So they make actions and the graph um, takes some transition according to the action. And they also observe the state of the game graph and make actions based on the observations. So for the controller, or uh, sorry, for the environment, we always assume perfect information for the game. That means there's no delay in any of these two links. 
um, the, the environment always have perfect information uh, where the game is uh, currently at and the action of the environment always takes effect uh, immediately. However, for the controller player or for the ego player, we can introduce some communication delays here. For example, in the downward link, when the player tries to uh, observe the current state of the game graph, uh, this information doesn't um, go to the ego player immediately, rather it takes some time to reach the ego player. For example, here uh, we have five units of delay. We can model this as a kind of a shift register that the information will be uh, piped into, into such a queue uh, and after five units of time, they will reach the ego player. And uh, similarly for the upward link, the action of the controller may also take a few steps of delay until it can really take effect in the game draw. A nice observation here is that uh, it doesn't actually make a difference whether delays occur in the perception channel, so the up, uh, so this link, or it occurs in the um, in the actuation uh, channel, because if you let's say you sit somewhere at the interface with the game graph here, then you can actually not tell the difference whether delays occur here or here. And that gives us a, a nice property that uh, we can always combine these two channels. For example, if we have m units of delay in the uh, perception channel and we have n units of delay in the actuation channel, then we can simply combine them by assuming m plus n uh, time units of delay in only one direction. Okay. But this only holds for the ego player. Um, in this case, we the, the two players are not symmetric. And the, the general consequence of such an observation is that uh, we can have a, an obvious reduction to safety games with perfect information, so with no delays. Why this is the case? Um, because now we only have one shift register, right? Either in the perception or in the actuation. So we can do the similar trick as people do in, in, for example, in model checking where they compute the product of two automaton, uh, two automata. And here we can simply compute the product of a shift register with the game graph. Okay. Um, and after the product, then you have a, uh, let's say, a, a state space that incorporates both the shift register and the game graph. And in that model, there's no delay anymore. The good, th good thing about this is um, safety games under delays can be solved algorithmically because we can reduce it to safety games under no delays. And there are decision procedures to, to uh, address this. The general idea there is to uh, compute the set of unwinnable states until you reach some fixed points. Uh, then you either win or lose. But still, there's a downside about this uh, this um, reduction. Obviously, um, you have a blow up in the state space by a factor of the uh, by an exponential factor in the magnitude of delay. Because uh, when you do the product, if you have five units of delay, then it will be timed by every state in the game graph. And this exponential blow up will make the make the synthesis uh, problem super hard in practice. Uh, later on, you will see how we can come up with an incremental algorithm that tries to avoid such an exponential blow up. Good. Now let's start by adding some delay to our central safety game. As we have already seen that uh, the green uh, actions are actually a safe strategy for the controller under no time delay. But how about we have one step of delay now? What does it mean? It means that um, whenever at state C2, if the controller choose an action, uh, chooses an action, then this action will not immediately uh, take effects. Um, that means the controller needs 
one time unit to make a decision that will uh, take effects one time unit later. And this is equivalent to say that the action that will take effect at state C2 is actually pre-decided one step uh, ago, that is at the state E1. So in this way, we, we, um, we encode the strategy by annotating the environment states. For example, for the state E1, we say that the winning strategy for the controller is A. And this simply means at state E1, the controller already has to decide a choice that takes effects one time unit later. That is A. Okay. So basically, we annotate this safe action A to the environment state. And that is the state when the controller already has to make a decision. And similarly, at state um, E2, for example, the strategy is B. That means uh, already at this state, the controller decided that one time unit later, I will take an B. Okay. I hope this is um, obvious to you. So this winning strategy, one can easily verify uh, that it is indeed winning for the controller. So if it never, if the controller follows this strategy, then the unsafe state E3 will never be reached. Now let's try to lift the delay a bit to two steps. What happens now? Things get a bit different here because um, Let's look at the state C2. In case of two step of, uh, steps of delay, uh, we have to make a pre-decision two steps uh, before. That means the action that takes effect at C1 is in fact pre-decided at the states two steps ago. That is either C2 or C3, okay, because from C2, after two steps, we will be at state C1. And at C state C3, after two steps, we will also be at state C1. Now, um, we know that um, from C2, we can only take action A, right? Because B goes to E3. Um, yeah, now let's look at the, what this strategy says here. So now we annotate C1 with the uh, case dis distinction of the strategy. Um, for example, we annotate C1 with A. That means two steps later, I will take an A. Okay, and what is the state two steps later after C1? It can be C2. It also can be C3. But for C2, we cannot take B. For C3, we cannot take A, OK? And that means at the state C1, we don't have a safe decision that will take effect two steps later. Because if we decide A, then, um, the, the, then we can go C3, and then this is not safe. Well, if we decide B two steps later, then we can go C3, and this is not safe. That's why we have a case distinction here. And this distinction basically needs some memory. What is the memory? We can simply, at C1, already memorize the choice. Uh, either we go this way, either we choose A, or we go this way by cho choosing B. OK, and now by memorizing such information, if we really choose an A here at C1, then we know that uh, two steps later at C2, we can safely choose A. That's the strategy here tells us. And the same case applies for the downward uh, path. So if we memorize that we chose B here, then at C3, we know we, we can choose B only. So um, in general, um, delayed safety games. Um, in this case, you can still have a winning strategy, but in this case, you need some memory to memorize the, the paths you chose or the actions you chose. If you don't have any memory for the controller, then there's simply no winning strategy. 
And later you will see how we can synthesize such um, strategies which need only finite memory. Then uh, we came up with this increment synthesis um, algorithm. In a nutshell, uh, this is based on a, uh, on a nice observation saying that a winning strategy for the controller for a larger delay can always be utilized for a safe win under a smaller delay k. Why this is the case? Um, because the higher the delay is, the harder it is for the controller to win. Right, and the, the consequence for this is that a position or a state is winning for a smaller delay is a necessary condition for it being winning on a larger delay. And based on such a, a consequence, we have this idea of incremental synthesis. So basically, um, we first synthesize a winning strategy for the controller uh, under no delays. Okay, so everything is perfect. And then we know that there's uh, some decision procedure we can use to, to synthesize a winning strategy for the controller. And then we try to uh, lift this, this strategy from K to K plus one, because there we can use the information which are already encoded in the winning strategy under the small delay K. Later, you will see how we can use utilize such information. And in, in between, we can always try to remove states which are uh, already not winnable, okay? And then we can simply repeat the whole process until we either uh, obtain a delay tolerant winning strategy or we prove that um, the, the initial state for the controller turns lossy. This is the um, abstract idea. And now let, let's uh, see a bit more details inside that. So the first step, we generate a maximally permissive strategy on the delay k equals to zero. By maximally permissive, I mean the controller can choose, uh, can choose whatever actions he or she likes. So this strategy for the controller at a certain stage state is a set of actions instead of a single action. And then we try to lift the delay from k to k plus one. And there are two different cases. If k is an odd number, remember that if k is an odd number, now in th this case, we have to annotate the environment state to get a winning strategy, right? And then um, we can do as follows. Suppose we already have the winning strategy uh, for delay k. And in that case, uh, this strategy is annotated to a controller state like this. So we know that at uh, C3, we will play the strategy sigma 1 until sigma, uh, let's say, k minus 1 divided by 2. And um, uh, this is the, the history or, or the memory that the controller has. So after playing such a sequence of actions, the controller will play either A or C or E, right? And then uh, similarly for C4, we have a winning strategy already under delay K. And now we have to lift the delay to K plus one. That means now we have to annotate E5, a winning strategy for the controller. And because we cannot distinguish uh, which, uh, which action the, the environment player chose, so we have to make a safe choice. That means we have to take the intersection of these two set of winning strategies. Okay, the intersection in this case gives us C and E. And that means um, already at the state E5, after a sequence of uh, transitions, it is safe for the controller to play either C or E. Because no matter which, uh, transitions the environment took, we can always safely take either C or E. This is the intersection of the of the uh, safe strategies under delay K. All right, there's another case when K is even. That means uh, the, the strategy under delay K is annotated on an environment state. In, in this case, the controller actually 
uh, can freely choose whatever action he or she likes because we we do have a controllability here because this is a controller state we can either choose a or b or c right uh, of course we need to avoid b which leads to the unsafe state but um, the only thing we need to do for the rest is to append the history or append the memory into the strategy that means if we decided to choose a here then we can only play the strategy uh, for e3 and the other host for uh, and the similar thing holds for for the uh, lower transition so the resulting strategy for delay k plus one would be a followed by the strategy for delay k uh, or c followed by the strategy uh, for delay k that is the the general idea how you can utilize the information that are already encoded in the in the strategy for delay k and now you can repeat the whole process until you can prove uh, either lossy or you get a winning strategy great uh, we, we had a prototypical implementation of the incremental synthesis algorithm we did some comparison uh, so all the benchmarks are from the uh, escaping game as you have for this sin uh, in the robot example so first we have an implementation which uses a reduction idea which has the exponential blow up and we are based on some explicit state representations as you can see there already for some small examples the state space gets quite large and then in those cases we don't have a conclusion whether the controller is winnable or 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 not and here dash lines mm, mean that we we succeeded in proving that uh, the controller is not winnable as you can see uh, when the delay increases to four the controller is no longer winnable uh, in in this three benchmarks but all the question marks uh, mean that we don't have any conclusion there this is mainly because of the uh, state space explosion problem, as is the case for model checking. And then we have another uh, implementation which uses the state of the art uh, synthesis uh, tools, which is called safety sense. It uses a, uh, a symbolic representation of the state space. In the meantime, we still do the reduction uh, so the reduction reduces uh, safety games under delays to delay free games and then we solve the delay free games using the state of art uh, safety synthesizer in this case you can see we don't have any question marks anymore it's faster than the explicit uh, state implementation and we are able to show uh, that the controller has a winning strategy uh, for example for delay five but still it needs quite some time to do so and then we implemented um, our incremental algorithm without any reduction there so uh, we used the information uh, when lifting from a smaller delay to a larger delay in this case you can see um, we can do the synthesis problem uh, faster than both of these two naive implementations especially when the delay goes larger uh, to the right then we can use uh let's say a couple of seconds to uh, finish the synthesis of a safe controller uh however for the state of art uh they need uh, this is not the case what is in particular interesting is the last column here where um uh, this is the percentage of the state space that we can remove during the incremental uh, process because we already know that some states are not winnable under a small, smaller delay, then they are not winnable under a larger delay. So we can simply remove those from the state space. And this is the key reason why we are uh, much faster than the other implementations. Good. Um, by far, we have seen uh, a very restricted form of delay because remember this uh, shift register that you always have to be acute any information come from the, let's say the head of the register always takes a fixed amount of delay until it can reach the controller 
But in practice, this is not always the case because some information may get out of order. So the one which arrives earlier can get to the controller uh, later than some other information. And here I depict um, a typical scenario here. For example, um, the observation uh, stamped by 61 arrives actually earlier than the uh, observation 60. And we call such a scenario out of order. So basically the information are not queued. And the surprising fact for this is that it actually helps us. Uh, it actually makes the problem easier for, uh, of the synthesis. Why this is the case? Because um, as soon as we have 61 arrived earlier than 60, that only means that we have more recent state information available earlier, all right? Compared to the uh, fixed delay case, 61 will arrive, I say at 63, but now it arrives earlier and we have more recent information and this information will help us uh, to make more uh, accurate decisions for the controller. So it in fact only reduce the effective delay. For example, in this case, the effective delay is two, the maximum delay is five, and it only improves the controllability. So we have shown that um, in terms of qualitative controllability, meaning that we only care about whether the controller is winnable or not, then the worst case of the out of order delivery is actually equivalent to order preserving delay because the worst case is that um, everything arrived in order and every information is subject to a, a fixed amount of delay that is five and um, for future work we plan to explore let's say stochastically uh, expected controllability and this would be even better because now we have more recent information and now we can compute the expected controllability in a quantitative setting. And this will, um, will let's say, uh, yield more, uh, yield better control strategy for the controller. There's another extension. Um, as we all know that messages in communications may get lost in practice. So in our previous uh, settings, uh, we, we never have messages lost, but in this extension, suppose we have two um, observations of the states lost, uh, pi 6 and pi 8. And now this picture shows we can actually utilize our, um, our incremental synthesized strategy to address such message loss. Why this is the case? So. Every time we compute a strategy for the controller with no delay, in the meantime, we will compute uh, a strategy which, are, which is tolerant to two steps of delay, sigma two here. And also we compute a strategy that is tolerant to four steps of delay. And then we queue um, all the, the pre-decisions in a, let's say a, a queue. If there's no delay. For example, at pi two, we have immediate observation of the states. Uh, and then this sigma four and sigma six are simply useless. However, whenever there are message lost, for example, now we have two consecutive message lost, and then we can simply retrieve the pre-decision from our queue and apply this um, strategy to the controller because we know that sigma six uh, this pre-decision is tolerant to two steps of delay. So we can actually perform this strategy, even though we don't have the fresh um, observation of the system. Because there are two consecutive delays, we need two uh, pre-decisions in the queue. So if pi 8 is lo also lost, then we can simply retrieve sigma 8 from the queue as a winning strategy uh, for the controller. As soon as there are only finitely many uh, message lost, then we can always have a finite queue here and this suffices to provide the controller with a winning strategy. And the conclusion here is the controller can still win a safety game in the presence of bounded finitely many message loss, 
leveraging delay resilient strategies that that are um, the pre decisions in our queue. And then um, as an as an extension of our uh, incremental synthesis, they have shown in an article paper that um, the qualitative controllability between a fixed delay and a out of order delay and uh, the message loss setting, they are equivalent. They are formally equivalent, meaning that um, if you have a winning strategy in this uh, fixed delay setting, then you will also have a winning strategy in these two extended settings. Um, the, the proof of this is rather complicated, but um, the general impression is that, um, yeah, for, for, for those three cases, you always have the equivalent controllability. That is uh, super nice in my point of view. Yeah, I think um, for the rest part of the tutorial, I, I will hand over to Najun to walk you through the uh, synthesis of switching logic in the setting of hybrid systems. Uh, before that, uh, in case you have any questions, feel free to ask, or you can also uh, write in the chat. Yeah, Najun, then you can share your screen, I think. Okay, thank you. Okay, now let's go to the last part of this tutorial about uh, uh, switch logic called hybrid systems. Uh, actually, you see that uh, as uh, we talked before, see that uh, there are two types of delays uh, happening in a simple physical system. One is related, related to discrete jumps, the other is related to the continuous evolution. So the first uh, uh, thing here, we want to model two types of delays in a uniform model so that we extend the classical uh, hybrid automata uh, to delay hybrid automata so that the two types of delays can be well uh, handled. Uh, actually, you see that uh, the definition for the delay hybrid automata is uh, formally given here. You see, it consists of uh, several components here. So you see, the Q uh, is the same as in the classical hybrid automata, stand for a set of a finite set of uh, modes. Uh, X stands for a set of continuous uh, state variables. U is a new one for a set of continuous functionals, uh, which uh, is used to. Uh, the state space of the delay hybrid automata uh, invariant is the same as in the classical hybrid automata, uh, which is used to define an, an, uh, in each mode. Okay, uh, you see the continuous evolution can be mode only if it holds. Okay, uh, also we define a set of initial sites. Uh, the starting point of the system. Uh, actually, you see that uh, uh, certainly you see because uh, you see that uh, states are functional. So uh, x zero is certainly a subset of uh, u. Okay, uh, f is used to define the uh, the, the continuous flow, uh, same as in the uh, hybrid automata. But here you see the f maps each mode to a differential equation rather than uh, ordinary differential equation. That is the difference. Okay, E stand for the set of uh, discrete jumps, uh, which is a uh, uh, binary relation among the modes. You see, like the, the here E one E two in this picture. Okay, uh, D is used to model the delays associated with each uh, discrete jumps. You see, so for each discrete jumps. A D maps to a, 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 a delay to, to it. Okay. 
a G is a card which is uh, uh, assigns a uh, uh, card to each discrete charms. Uh, only the you see that uh, discrete charms uh, can happen only if the card is uh, uh, holds. Okay, uh, that is the same as in the hybrid automata. Uh, R is a reset function uh, which is associated with each uh, discrete jump. You see that uh, once a jump happened, you see that uh, the the reset will reset uh, reset the the state in the pre mode uh, to another state in the post mode. Uh, that is the same as in the classical hybrid automata. Uh, that the difference is that you see we have uh, we uh, we. Uh, to be mind that uh, you see that the state is functional rather than a point in the n-dimensional uh, uh, Hilbert space. Okay, so that is a formal uh, definition. Uh, here is an example. So the problem we consider here is called the switch logic synthesis problem. Means that uh, originally we have an original system with delays. It's called uh, the original delayed hybrid automata. Uh, uh, defined here. Also, we have a safety property, P is here. Definitely, you see that uh, the, uh, uh, it is a lot more behavior of the original uh, delay differential hybrid automata set by the safety property. So what, in, what we need to do is that we need to strengthen the domain constant in each mode, as well as the guards uh, associated with each uh, discrete jumps. Uh, sometimes maybe we also need to consider the maybe restrict the initial size so that the uh, so that uh, you see the for the resulting hybrid uh, delayed hybrid automata uh, what its behavior satisfies the safety property. So that is called the switch logic synthesis problem. Definitely here we need to consider the the the, the three issues here. So first thing is that the result in the hybrid automata is definitely safe uh, with respect to the given uh, safety property. Uh, uh, second thing is that uh, the, uh, the, the resulting hybrid automata is a refinement of H, means that uh, the uh, environment is strengthened, guard is strengthened. Uh, possibly the initial set is uh, restricted. Definitely, uh, H star uh, is a lot of blocking means that uh, once you see in the original hybrid automata, uh, we can find some solution uh, or trajectory the property. Definitely, we you see that uh, we 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 need to guarantee that uh, the behavior of the result hybrid automata is not empty. Otherwise, we we can simply assign force to the environment. Uh, under the guard, uh, also maybe set the initial set to be empty. Definitely, we get a, 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 a result in the hybrid automata satisfy the, uh, the, 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 the safety problem for you because the, the, the matter does nothing. Okay, definitely of its behavior. That's the, the trivial solution. So, we want to avoid such a trivial solution. So, that is the uh, not the, 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 the meaning of the law. So the basic idea how to solve the uh, switch logic synthesis problem is quite similar to the solution to the, uh, the, the classical hybrid automata. So basic idea is that uh, invariant based uh, solution means that uh, we compute uh, a global invariant means that uh, which consists of uh, differential environment for each mode, and then we use, uh, but uh, this uh, uh, local differential environment uh, uh, forms a global differential environment, uh, such that you see that uh, the, uh, we can strengthen the, uh, the domain strength with each uh, resulted differential environment for each mode. Uh, so that uh, the behavior in each mode satisfies the safety property. Also, we use this uh, uh, result to the differential environment to strengthen the gas uh, among the discrete jumps, so that uh, the, the dis discrete jumps also can guarantee the, uh, the, the, the safety. 
um, uh, you, you see that uh, that is the basic idea. So here the the the, the two problems we need to solve. First the thing is that uh, we need to compute uh, differential invariants associated with each mode, so that uh, the the, mo the once we strengthen the mode with the the resulted differential invariants, we can guarantee the safety property. The second issue is that uh, uh, how to compute the new guard to strengthen the new guard associated with the each discrete jumps, so that. Uh, uh, the once the you see that uh, the 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 uh, the, sim, the invariant codes in the pre mode after the jump the the invariant in the post mode codes also that uh, you also <coughs> sorry you need to guarantee that uh, the safety property uh, is uh, is satisfied in the pro mode uh, after is satisfied. Uh, uh, and the discrete jump happens, uh, the resulted in the post mode also satisfy the, the, the safety property. So that is uh, the second uh, problem we need to solve. So now you now we see how to solve the solve the, the, the first thing to compute uh, uh, different in, differential invariant to each uh, each mode. The basic uh, actually the basic idea is quite similar to uh, to uh, the uh, unbounded verification to delay differential equations. Uh, means I talked before. So the basic idea is that we want to generate uh, invariant in uh, 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 with this with this uh, with respect to unbounded time, but we can consider to to compute. Uh, a bounded environment in t time unit, so that uh, you see that uh, so 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 that uh, you see that uh, the reachable site afterwards uh, satisfies the safety pro property already. We only need to compute a reachable site uh, uh, over approximation of the reachable site before the time uh, the time bound, uh, which conforms the uh, which can environment can guarantee the safety property. Uh, that is the basic idea. So, so, so for that, for to address uh, the problem, we, we firstly, we consider the linear case. Mean, uh, uh, linear case means that uh, we consider the linear differ delay differential equation. Problem is quite similar to, uh, to the uh, results used for the unbounded verification of delay differential uh, we use this uh, 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 theorem uh, borrowed from the console theory. Th this claims that uh, uh, once you see that uh, uh, once given a uh, linear differential equations, uh, we just consider its uh, uh, characteristic equations, the solutions to the characteristic equations, some the, the some constants to guarantee that uh, the, 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 the guarantee that uh, the Zero parts of the uh, the the calculated equations, then we can guarantee that the uh, the uh, the linear delay differential equation is globally uh, convert stable, uh, so that uh, you can we can compute a t time uh, t time unit. Uh, afterwards, uh, uh, we we can guarantee that uh, the either of all reachable states uh, satisfy the uh, the the or maybe while the safety is violated already. So for the 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 safety is violated, we don't need to uh, uh, do anything because you cannot synthesize uh, uh, the the switch controllers to guarantee the safety property anymore. Okay. So when, uh so that we need to uh, compute the switch per site before the t time unit to. Uh, to uh, actually, it, it is an uh, over approximation of the reachable side. We can guarantee that uh, the over approximation forms a uh, in, uh, environment together with the 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 the, the region after the uh, the uh, so that we can form a uh, a uh, uh, 
invariant for the, the mode. So that is the basic idea, okay? So for the learning case, it is also the same. Uh, we just first step, then we use the, uh, the, the, the previous uh, part to, uh, to compute the, uh, the, the, the T environment for the linear case. Then we can prove that uh, we, can, we, can, we, can, we can generate the infinite environment for the uh, non linear uh, dynamics. Okay? So the second step, once we we synthesize the differential invariants for each mode, how to compute the uh, uh, how to strengthen the how to compute the new with each discrete jump, you see so that the safety property can be guaranteed before a jump and after jump. So here we the basic idea is that firstly we the discrete jump uh, with the uh, with the uh, with respect to the differential environment before the uh, uh, jump uh, under the after the jump um, uh, uh, like two region that uh, because there is a delay associated with this, uh, this discrete jump. So uh, take the D with the discrete jump uh, into account with the, this card. So then to a uh, backward uh, 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 compute the rich site associated with, uh, with this uh, 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 card without a delay, uh, with respect to the the, the delay time you this discrete jump like here then we can uh, then we can uh, get a, an ideal guard so that uh, you see that uh, once the, uh, the the pre uh, st uh, the, the state certified property uh, once the ideal guard holds even the delay associated with the discrete jump is considered. The reset, reset the, the, the pre state to begin the post mode, the, the safety is still holds. So that is the idea. Uh, here we uh, give an example about the pre state pre population. So here the two modes Q1 and Q2 stand for the different season. Uh, in different season, you see the pre-date and the pre uh, uh, with different change, uh, change dynamics. So what we need to do is, is that we need to uh, keep the balance of the population between the pre-date and the pre uh, uh, among these two seasons. So, so that, that is the basic idea. So, uh, now we go to the uh, conclusion uh, of these tutorials. Uh, in this tutorial, the problem we 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 are trying to address is uh, uh, is that uh, the the delay associated with uh, with uh, with dynamic and hybrid system actually uh, delay uh, increasingly widespread use of let work the distributed sensing and control. Uh, which is a substan uh, uh, substantial feedback always uh, uh, thus affecting hybrid control schemas. Uh, delays impact the controllability and the control performance in both the discrete and the continuous paths. Uh, the uh, the results we uh, we uh, we obtained we are present in this tutorial, including the bounded safety verification methods. Sorry, for delayed differential time, extension to unbounded verification by leveraging stability criteria, also safety games and the algorithm for efficient control synthesis, and the delay hybrid automata under the algorithm logic synthesis. Regarding the future work, there are lots of remaining challenges. For example, 
uh, delayed differential equations exhibiting state dependent and or stochastic delays uh, also uh, per generation for time delays actually you see that in recent years some initial uh, some initial attempts have been done for example originally by uh, prior and uh, Yababe's uh, people uh, they uh, extended uh, very certificate to ordinary differential equations to uh, delay differential equations. Uh, uh, some work by Amos team and also some work from my group. Uh, but uh, you see, uh, general environment generation for delay differential equations still remains challenging. So that's that's it. Thank you for your attention. So. Uh, I think Minsu and myself are very happy to answer your question if you have any questions. Yeah. So I think we have uh, around 10 minutes left for the tutorial and feel free to raise any questions. Um, if there's not, maybe I can I can ask you a very quick question. So, Najin, at the end of your tutorial, you talked about uh, invariant synthesis for delay differential equations. Uh, yeah. I, I would like to know what is the most difficult part for this problem? Why it is uh, challenging? Uh, actually, you see, currently, uh, existing work related to uh, in one generation is about uh, uh, actually basically on the uh, it's called the uh, pari uh, uh, functional. Actually, the basic idea is uh, similar to uh, uh, Neapolo Korsky uh, functionals for delay differential equations. Uh, which is uh, quite similar to extend the uh, near function to ordinary differential or uh, continuous dynamic system. So for this uh, uh, this kind of uh, bariatric functionals, you see that uh, we just consider some the uh, sufficient conditions. Means that uh, once you can find the, the bariatric functionals, you are lucky. You can prove your problem. But once uh, you see you, you see you cannot find the uh, the the parasitic functional with the uh, the condition and the predefined templates, you cannot claim something. But on the other hand, you see for ordinary differential equations, uh, uh, ten years ago we published one paper at uh, EM Soft uh, uh, two thousand eleven. Uh, we established a uh, sufficient and condition for semi-algebra sets to be differential invariants of uh, uh, dynamic and hybrid system. So based on the necessary and sufficient conditions, you see that uh, for a given template, uh, if you cannot uh, uh, synthesize uh, in differential invariants or invariants, uh, that means that uh, you cannot find the, uh, the, 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 the such things. Uh, so, but uh, for the delay differential equations, uh, well, we are trying to uh, get uh, the similar necessary and sufficient conditions for invariant generation. But uh, unfortunately, currently we only have the sufficient conditions. Uh, what we are trying to do is uh, to relax the, the sufficient conditions as relax as relax as possible. But uh, you see that uh, ideally we need to, we need to have a nice and a sufficient conditions. Uh, that is one uh, challenging issue. The the second uh, challenging issue you see that uh, for the uh, parasitic synthesis, uh, even for invariant generations, um, for ordinary differential equ uh, uh, equations, in general we can find some effective way. Uh, based on semi-definite uh, uh, programmings. But uh, for delay differential equations, currently we cannot find uh, the effective way. We have to do uh, everything uh, in ad hoc way. 
we we cannot find uh, some the uniform algorithm based on some uh, uh, semi-definite program technique uh, so that uh, uh, synthesis uh, 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 bi functionals or invariants efficiently. So there are two challenges here. Okay, I see. So basically, the first challenge is about to obtain a kind of a completeness result for the synthesis. Right. Problem. Yeah. And yeah, the right. second is about efficiency of the synthesis. Yeah. Okay, I see. Thanks. I don't see uh, any other questions. Uh, maybe even after the tutorial, in case you have some question or you're interested in our uh, results, you can simply drop us an email. We will be happy to uh, discuss further. Yeah, right. Yeah. If you have any questions, just send us emails. Yeah. Then I think with all that, we can conclude this tutorial and um, thank you everyone for attending and thank, thank you, Yuha, for organizing all this stuff. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so bye bye. See you. See you then. Bye bye. 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 bye bye. See you. Thanks. Thank you so much for coming today. See you. Bye.